Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. You can relax today because we have a doctor in the house. Today, my guest is Dr. Mitchell Yass. Now, Mitchell is the creator of the Yass Method, which has accurately diagnosed and resolved pain for thousands of people during a span of almost 30 years. It uses physical therapy and weight training. Mitchell's also authored three books, including The Pain Cure RX and The Yass Method for Pain-Free Movement. Now, I'm sure I don't need to remind any of you how distracting and limiting constant pain can be both to your business and just to your lifestyle, your well-being in general. So if you're suffering, definitely keep listening. If you know someone that's got pain, then ping them the link to this episode. Make sure they tune in as well, because Mitchell can really help you if you take on board what he says. So without further ado, let's hear more about how to get pain free as Mitchell explains more. So welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Mitchell Yass. Thanks for having me, Trevor. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's great to have the opportunity to, to certainly learn more about the method, but also to get to know you as well um, as an individual, because you've been in the business for a long time. You know what you're talking about from a scientific perspective as well. You've done all the research. You've seen proven things um, from the results of the people that you help. Um, but it's new to a lot of us. So it'll be interesting to learn more before we jump into the method itself. Maybe just start with a little bit of your journey that's, that's really brought you to where you are now. Sure. So if you want to understand where I am, uh, you really kind of have to go back actually to my childhood, which is where I was the true 99 pound weakling, the guy who got sand kicked in his face. I had a lot of self-esteem issues. Um, and so I did some introspective thinking and recognized that it was my thinness that was affecting my confidence and how I thought about myself. So I decided to try to learn how to get stronger. And, and, and I did that um, over an, a period of from uh, probably from about uh, 16 to about uh, 19 to 26 is where I tried. And what happened was um, I just had a fast metabolism. So I found it difficult to grow. And I followed all the usual stuff. You know, I checked the Joe Weider magazines and the Arnold Schwarzenegger videos and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden it dawned upon me that weightlifting was kind of relating to physics. There was forces being applied and um, you had to push against the forces. And amazingly, I kind of took a high school physics course and started applying the laws of physics, force vectors, fulcrums, um, all these different types of things. And over that process of really understanding the science of weightlifting, I was able to put on 40 pounds of muscle over four years. So I went from 160 pounds to 200 pounds uh, over this four year period. This was at a period where my occupation was a project manager in construction. That was my first career. And um, I just didn't find it to be rewarding. I didn't find myself being satisfied by it. And so I was going to take a second career. I found out about this thing called physical therapy. And so I started to get into it. And lo and behold, as I began my process, I started to recognize that the way the method was being utilized to identify and treat pain, primarily through the use of the MRI, didn't make sense. It wasn't logical. And through an understanding that I developed, I started to recognize that in more than 98% of cases, the cause of pain was muscular. And lo and behold, the mechanism to resolve this pain was going to be from this understanding that I had developed personally in my way of learning how to strengthen muscle. And so it turns out that this personal understanding became the core of the treatment model that I used. And this has been used now for over 28 years. And I've treated thousands of people and um, it's been highly successful. So um, if you really want to understand my success in my practice, you really have to recognize that it's personally based. It's not that what I do is primarily based on my education or my training in my profession. It really comes from a personal understanding. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I, I love it when I hear people that have they've worked out something for themselves that's 
benefited them and then they're taking that to the place where they can serve other people as well and it, it just magnifies the impact so well done that, that's a really good um a good place to be um there's certainly a need out there um with the the way people are feeling in a lot of cases and like you say if there is misdiagnosis through um the different procedures that are just being applied in the wrong way or, or whatever then yeah we're using the wrong thing to to try and solve everything so so unpack a bit more then you got me curious about the yas method so physical therapy weight training but dig into how does that actually solve the pain issue sure so if we could let's just get a little better understanding of the issue of chronic pain so chronic pain never existed in the history of mankind if you look at the annals of medical history it never existed it began in the late 19 early uh 1980s early 1990s and what happened the justification for this growth of people the number of people suffering from pain relates to the advent of technology so you had the advent of the computer and the telephone and the cell phone automation and all this type stuff started leading people away from doing physical labor and doing things manually to now doing things through technology computers and phones and automation so as a result where prior to the late 1980s early 1990s the group of po the population that was most associated with chronic pain was the older population the retired population they would call it rheumatism well, as you get into this period of time, you start seeing that the group of people suffering from chronic pain is now spanning all the way down to people in their 20s, right? This has never been this way before. I treated a girl who was 20 who told me that she couldn't support her head. It actually felt like it was a bobblehead. That's how weak her muscles had become because of the fact, well, she does everything on a computer, right? They don't really even use books much more. Everything is that laptop or phone right in front of your face. Um, so as a result of this, that's why a very large expanse of people began to have pain but why chronic pain why did it become chronic well at the same time that automation led to the invention of the mri the mri finds a structural variation like a herniated disc stenosis arthritis a meniscal tear most people in pain know of the types of structures that are identified at the time they're having their pain and are asserted to be the cause of that pain because it's found at the time of the pain for the first time. Well, it turns out that those structural variations existed well before that initiation of the pain and will exist after. So it's actually not the tissue in distress creating the pain. And as a result of that, if you treat a tissue that is not creating the pain, the actual tissue that is, which happens to be a muscle due to weakness or imbalance, continues to elicit the pain therefore that is the cause of chronic pain right it is acutely muscular but becomes chronic because you haven't identified the muscle as the cause that's why chronic pain exists look at the numbers 130 million americans roughly 1 billion people worldwide suffering from chronic pain people must recognize that there is something systemic in the way that their diagnosis is being derived for so many people to have pain and it not be able to be resolved yeah it's a lifestyle thing isn't it because of like a lot of it posture and just not knowing how to sit or not getting enough exercise not getting enough breaks or movement within the day-to-day -day activities or whatever that makes right. a lot of sense to me yeah well think yeah. of think, think of this process so we know that chronic pain never existed and we know that there was this change in the way muscle has been used prior to the late 1980s early 1990s to now right so you have to recognize well if i'm saying it's muscular why didn't have people have chronic pain because they use their muscles and there is this concept that muscular strength is sustained when muscle is used well when you stop using it clearly the muscular output is going to begin to decline it's going to weaken so as you then go and try to do activities now you're going to be susceptible to the muscle straining also you talk about you brought up a key point people are sitting for longer periods of time well sitting strangely enough has to be perceived as an activity because you are still working against gravity and so if you don't have the appropriate muscle strengthened for that activity and you're doing it for a sustained period of time those muscles can strain 
So people often think about the idea is, is oh, I sit too long. Don't think it. the problem is you sit too long. It's that you're not conditioned to sit. So if I was to strengthen the appropriate muscles, then if you chose to sit for six, eight, ten hours in a day, you could because you're conditioned to do so. So we need to change the mindset of the individual and to stop thinking that the problem is that they're doing activities that are causing pain and now change their mindset into I'm just not conditioned to do those activities. That's why I'm having their pain. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And pain is like a warning signal, isn't it? To, to alert the fact that something's not quite right, something needs adjustment, you need to focus on sorting this out. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse and worse. So, Which yeah. is a very, see, just even within that point, let's talk about that. So we know that pain is a signal of a tissue in distress. Well, you have all these people out there and they're getting opioids, right? Heroin, synthetic heroin. They're getting anti-inflammatories. They're taking antidepressants. They're getting cortisone shots. They're getting epidural nerve blocks. Look at all the things we're talking about here. Does that address a tissue in distress? No. All those do is mass symptoms. Yeah. All that's doing is minimizing the brain's awareness of the distress of the tissue. The tissue is still in distress. You still haven't fixed anything. So if you're willing to go through that process of simply using masking agents, you have to understand that all you're doing is prolonging the inevitable, which is that at some point, if you're having that symptom, you're going to have to figure out what tissue is in distress and then address the tissue, yeah. the tissue eliciting the symptom through whatever means appropriately resolves the distress. In the case of muscle, you have to do some sort of targeted progressive resistance strengthening to get that muscle strong enough so we can perform your tasks without breaking down. Yeah, yeah. So we looked at what would be some of the initial sort of practical things people could do, maybe just from listening to this, maybe they're fidgeting and changing their, their position. Maybe they're on the treadmill listening to this and, and they're doing well with exercise. But what would be some of the, I guess, an easy thing would be get a certain level of movement but also don't slouch or sit for too long in a an awkward position and i suppose people define awkward differently but for people that maybe you're listening that are not in pain constantly or a chronic element we'll, we'll touch on those people that are in a minute but for those people some of the sort of preventative measures that they can take now so they don't get to the point where they they've got an imbalance in in their muscles and things Sure. So there are certain things that you have to recognize in terms of how the human body works. So everything we do is in front of us, right? So if we're going to use our arms, we're going to grab things, pick things up, move things. Everything is done in front. So by definition, the front shoulder, the chest, and the bicep are going to be used more than the upper back, the posterior shoulder, and the triceps. So if we're to think about what's going to lead to neck pain, back pain, even headache, we're going to start to recognize that there's a correlation between symptoms and some altered posture. So that person who ends up with that forward head and shoulder posture who's also having neck pain or shoulder pain or headaches, I want you to start connecting the two. They go together. The symptom of pain and the improper posture go together. So if you want to resolve the pain, you have to resolve the altered posture, which goes by strengthening the upper back muscles. If we're looking about ergonomic mechanisms, well, you can't be sitting in your chair with your shoulders in front of your hips and not recognize you're putting a load on your body, right? So if you want to sit or improve your ergonomics, you want to sit in a chair so that your shoulder is two inches behind your hip. Not in front of your hip, but behind your hip. Because what that's doing is it's taking your center of mass and putting it behind your hip, which means something else is going to support you. What's going to support you? It's the back of the chair. The back of the chair is now supporting you. So you're sitting in a way where you're not overusing your muscles. So if you want to work ergonomically just to limit the chance of straining, sitting, always sit with your shoulder two inches behind your hip, right? If we're talking about the legs, it's the same premise. Your front thigh muscles are always going to be stronger than your back thigh muscles. So if we're having lower back pain, and we also notice, look at our posture. 
we see we have an excessive arching in the back and we're having lower back pain. Well, those go with the concept that the front thigh muscles may be too strong a relationship to the back thigh muscles. So again, we want to resolve both the back pain and the excessive arching. They go together. So you could either strengthen your hamstrings, the posterior thigh, or if you're looking just to do a simple check, just stretch your front thigh muscles. If you notice that stretching your front thigh muscles both takes some of the arching out of your lower back and decreases your pain, you've just reinforced that your lower back pain is muscular-based. You don't have to look in the direction of getting an MRI or taking medications. You could take control by recognizing it's a muscular deficit and you have the ability to alter it. So those are the kinds of things that I think both from an ergonomic standpoint and a recognition that most likely your pain is muscular allows you to become empowered to take control of your symptoms and your level of function. Yeah, that's really good. There's a lot of detail there. Um, I think people should definitely go back and listen to that again and just every now and again check. Yeah, actually, am I, am I if I am in a business where I'm sat a lot, have I got a good posture? Because um, that's key, like you say. That's really good. Ah, I enjoy all this sort of stuff. I find it fascinating. We are amazingly created, um, and I think the way we can function if we do it well uh, is certainly to our benefit, but we can easily mess it up and be our own worst enemy sometimes. So all of this use, is useful information. So thank you for what you shared. We only just touched the surface, really. Um, let's dig into, for people that are in constant pain, They've tried different things at the hospital, had different tests, even had surgery. Because I know you, you help people that have had surgery and where the pain persists, you're still able Absolutely. to alleviate the pain. So what would be, A, for people in that scenario that are listening, there's hope because you've you've helped thousands of people. So you know what you're talking about and there's a method and a way that can help them. What would be, would the first step for, for them getting help be, maybe read the book, get a bit more understanding about the YAS method or any other sort of first steps they could take um, just to find out, okay, I haven't tried this, I want to get rid of the pain, I'm going to give it a go. What would be the, the the first step for them? Sort of head to your website and have a conversation or is the book the sort of the good fa fundamental first step? I, I want people to take two concepts. And if you think about these two concepts, this is going to help you guide yourself as to understanding if you've been in chronic pain, why you probably haven't had your pain resolved. So we kind of want to look at this as a simple question. Is my pain muscular based or is it structural? Because if it's structural, you need surgery and you're going to need some sort of medical intervention. But if it's muscular, only you are going to be able to fix the muscular problem. And it doesn't really matter who you go to medically. They can't help you. If you need strength, only you can get strength, right? So we, we recognize we're looking at this point at which we're going to go in one of two directions, right? So I want to ask, I want people to think about this concept. Number one, do you notice that your pain is either brought on or enhanced when you do an activity? So if you, you, you're fine, you're great, but if you start to sit for too long, you notice your back pain comes on. If you stand too long, your back pain comes on. If you bend forward, your back pain or your knee or your hip comes on, right? So if we can establish that your pain is associated with an activity, at that point, you must recognize that the highest probability is the tissue in distress is a muscle, right? Because what tissue is responsible for activity? It's muscle. No, this is undeniable stuff here, right? So that's the first triggered to a question of, uh oh, I know the MRI said I had a herniated disc or stenosis or arthritis or a pinched nerve, but I don't know when I do that activity, that does seem to bring it on. So maybe that's just an independent variable and actually the tissue creating my pain is muscle. Okay. Number two, if you notice that your pain is not sustained, that it's not continuous and constant in its intensity, wouldn't that be a red flag that probably the tissue in distress is not structure like arthritis or a pinched nerve or a meniscal tear? These are structures. So if the structure is in distress, wouldn't it always be in distress? Shouldn't your pain always be continuous yeah. and somewhat constant in its intensity? But if you notice that your pain is variable, in fact, 
sometimes you don't have it at all, but sometimes you have it, it's intense. That should be another red flag that maybe it's muscle and that when I use the muscle, it becomes intense. And when I rest the muscle, the pain goes away. So if you could look at yourself, and this is what I tell everybody, it, if you need to use the medical system, God bless, you should use the medical system. But my God, you should not use the medical system when you don't need it. Yeah. And the MRI leads people to use it when it's not needed, which is why you have chronic pain. I've shown that in more than 98% of cases, the cause is muscular. So number one, just say to yourself, does it appear that activity brings on my symptom? Is my pain constant or variable? If you say that it brings on, that activity brings it on, and that your pain is variable, specifically seeming to be associated with activity, your problem's muscular, you need to look for a muscular solution. That's where the YAS method comes in. So that to me, you don't, you don't need a medical degree for this kind of understanding. This is just straight logic. I'm just asking you to ask two questions about your situation. And if you find that it's muscular, at least now you could have comfort in knowing that you just need to find the right path to a muscular cause, which by all means, I believe the YAS method is the best method for that because it's a diagnostic and treatment model. I will be able to establish which muscles are involved. I will show you how to perform the proper exercises and how to use progressive resistance to strengthen the muscle. So um, I think if someone starts right there, that is the best guidance I could offer somebody because it allows you to get control. Then you can contact me through an email or the website or get books and, and you could go through the process, but you got to know that you need that process to start. Yeah, that is really good. That is, that's huge for a lot of people. I know for a lot of people listening to really let that soak in. If you're taking painkillers medication to numb a pain, which is only there when you do a certain activity, then look into a different approach, get to the root of it because it's probably muscular from what Mitchell was saying. Um, it makes perfect sense when you say it. Would I have, in a moment of daydreaming and thinking about that, would I have ever come to that conclusion myself? Probably not, no. So thank you for for, <laughs> for sharing it. Um, it's part of your gifting, your expertise and what you're passionate about and your purpose in life. So it, it's really good that you're bringing it to everybody that's listening. Um, because also people listening, you may feel you're fine now, but six weeks from now, if you suddenly start developing a pain, pull out this episode, listen to it again and start kind of diagnosing and thinking about, yeah, when am I getting the pain? Uh, it makes perfect sense when you say it like that. Um, that's really good. I, I actually would like to point out something you just said, which is that there is that person who has pain now, right? And then let's say within the next two weeks, their pain goes away. And then maybe in a week later, it comes back. And then for a period of time, it goes away. This seems to confound people. And this makes people perceive that their pain may be something of a more serious nature. Can I simply suggest that what's happening is you, let's say your pain is on your left hip region. So maybe you strain muscles in that region. Well, once you strain those muscles, and you have pain, your, body, your brain's never going to allow you to weight bear on your left leg fully at that level because it's painful. So what it's going to do is without you knowing it, you're going to shift a lot of weight more onto the right leg. So all of a sudden, that left hip region pain goes away. And a couple of weeks from now, now you have right knee pain. And you're wondering, oh, my God, I must have screwed up my left hip. Now it's my right knee. No. What happened was because of the strain of the left hip muscles, you excessively weight bear on the right leg causing the right knee muscles to break down. And that's why you have pain there. And now suddenly, in a few weeks from now, that right knee pain goes away, but now you have left ankle pain. And this is the most common way people experience pain. And they describe it as my pain is shifting. My, my pain is changing. It's not changing. It's responding to the fact that your brain will never allow you to have pain. So as soon as you initiate pain in one location, you will alter how you weight bear, which will mm. lead to an overuse of compensation somewhere else, which is why your pain then goes there and then goes somewhere else. So again, logic is the most powerful tool that a person has. 
So when you begin to start to take time and think about things better through a logical lens, it really helps you to have a better understanding and leads you to a better answer as to what you may be experiencing. Yeah, yeah. and it makes it makes perfect sense. Um, the body will adjust, won't like you're saying. Sometimes we're conscious of it and we purposely favor one side or another. A lot of the time we don't. And it's just the body gets on with that side of it to try and help us then just perform and, and live as we want to. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we're just passing the problem on from one part to another and not actually getting to the root, aren't we? So, yeah, uh, another key point uh, to throw in the mix for everybody listening and thinking about this. So, ah, OK, that makes more sense. I think light bulbs have gone on for a lot of people there. So, yeah, that makes more sense now. Definitely we are sort of running out of time here um but this is a really a really good topic um but i wanted to just from a business perspective uh let's pause pause the method for the moment just from your I, to just curious really to get your perspective on you've got this truth which to a large extent i won't say is being ignored but it's not as prevalent out there as going and getting loads of tests and the general run of the mill routine that, that happens when you go to the hospital with doctors, whatever, uh, not criticizing any doctors or hospitals, keep doing what you're doing, keep learning, keep helping people. Um, Cause that's really good. We need you. But also sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And then when we start to hear something, think actually, uh, okay, maybe this is a better approach for me. Maybe not for everyone, but like you say, 98% or so of people with chronic pain, it's not surgical um it's muscular i think that's huge that you know you might be in the two percent you might need surgery but if you're in the other camp then it's definitely worth thinking about and exploring finding out a little bit more if this is the first time you've heard it find out a little bit more so you feel more confident look at the research that mitchell has done it's all out there it's backed by science um it can't hurt you to explore more um, but from a business perspective, what's I guess is the biggest struggle that you're you're almost competing against a mindset which is too focused on procedures and tests and things like that. I, I think you just hit on the concept mindset. Chronic pain is not a medical issue. Yeah. Cirrhosis of the liver is an issue stenosis of a valve is a medical issue chronic pain is simply a recognition that a tissue is in distress and has not been identified at this point which allows it to continue to remain in pain in distress eliciting pain so it's actually cultural it's a cultural problem the global population for 40 years has been told the mri finds the cause of pain straight out no questions asked and as a result of that, the medical community has shifted which, from a mindset which has been around since the time of Hippocrates, which is that tissues in distress, in distress create specific symptoms, and therefore to understand the tissue, you need to interpret the symptoms. That's gone away. So right now it's simply MRI finding, that's what we treat. Yeah. To say complete fallacies. Osteoarthritis doesn't cause pain. Herniated discs don't cause pain. Uh, it, it's just the way it is. These tissues and these mechanisms don't cause pain. But because culturally it's been accepted, you just accept it, so you treat it. But if they cause pain, why have the number of people suffering with these things gone up? Why has the length of time they've suffered gone up? Why has the intensity of pain gone up? Yeah. Why has there been an opioid epidemic? Why has there been a rise in the level of depression, suicide? I mean, all the evidence is clear that this system isn't working. Why? Why? And the answer is because no one's really looked at chronic pain as its own entity, recognizing that it only started to begin, uh, began in the late 19, early, early 1990s. These diagnoses, often many of them, are things that have supposedly been around forever. And just so you can understand the idea is that post-mortem studies of people in the 1950s showed 40% of the population had herniated discs. 40% of the population had heard, well, where was the outcry of pain if herniated discs cause pain? It makes you wonder, do herniated discs cause pain or don't they? They don't. <laughs> 
yeah yeah again that makes perfect sense uh when you put it like that it's really good um let's as we're wrapping this up now um for people that are thinking right definitely need to explore and find out more about this it's worth saying one thing i think like you can help people help themselves but they have to a take action find out more about it get involved in in the process of the therapy the weight training whatever it is and then they have to day to day or however frequent do the actual exercises don't they so i guess mm -hmm. for everybody listening it's the choice of if i'm on painkillers do i want to take the easy route and just keep popping the pills or do i actually want to take action for the long term deal with the route and it's going to involve maybe i don't know weeks months of training certain muscle groups change your posture change something about your lifestyle so you have to be proactive or you can take the easier route which isn't actually solving the problem it's kind of mugging the feelings so that you don't think about them anymore isn't it i think that that's the key thing and i think i love the way that you help people help themselves but we have to help ourselves don't we that, that's such a key key element I, I, I think that is maybe one of the most important things for people to understand you th this exists you could take pain medication you could continue to get of uh, back fusions and all these other types of things they're doing radio frequency ablation burning inner you can do all that stuff so once you recognize all that stuff has been done and you're still having pain yeah. a decision has to be made and the decision is is the original diagnosis correct and you just haven't found the right treatment or is it possible that the original diagnosis was wrong and that's why all the treatments have not worked at that point that is the linchpin to what will make people decide whether to go forward and say nope i'm going to agree i think i got the wrong diagnosis there may be something else this guy's mentioning mentioning muscle he makes a lot of sense let me look into that or you're going to say nope I'm going to go with that diagnosis because the MRI must be right because that's what I've been told for 40 years. And I'm just going to keep getting treatments forever. Yeah. You've got to make that decision. Once you decide it was the diagnosis and you're willing to come this path, you're right. There's no question if you have a muscular cause. I can't make you stronger. That surgeon can't make you stronger. Your neighbor can't make you stronger. Only you're going to have to be able to make you stronger. The great news is that it doesn't take that long. Yeah. And once you get there, if you sustain your strength, you'll never have the symptom again. So now you are fully empowered to have the quality of life you choose. And in my mind, that's what being on earth is all about. Living the life and doing the things you so justly deserve and want to do. Having that ability. That's what I think my method, the Yacht's method represents. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if people are out there and they are, you are feeling rather cynical and you think, I, I don't know about all this. Hey, try it. What have you got to lose? If you've been on medication for X amount of years and it's not working, you're not getting anywhere. You're just going sort of ticking along. Try it. You know, um, that's what I would say. If you are not sure and a bit curious and a bit skeptical, then, you know, like anything else, uh, the power is in your own hands, really, to a large extent. Once you hear and understand uh, that there's different options this has been brilliant thank you uh mitchell for what you've shared um hopefully it's got people thinking hopefully there's lights going on and people think actually yeah there's hope there's a different approach i can i can take um and maybe they can be the leader in their family the people that they know by getting sorted with their their chronic pain whatever it is that they're, they're dealing with if it's the root is muscular you can help them um and also like you're based in the us but people don't have to turn up to your offices to your practice to get you to help them do you can do a lot of it remotely and you do do things virtually don't you so that's also good wherever you are in the world mitchell can help you if that's the best approach for you and between you and him you can decide that and take action accordingly there'll be a link to your website below but is that you mentioned earlier there's the website people can connect with you that way if they want to get the book if they think i'm not sure if it's muscular or not i need help understanding that are you up for sort of a conversation with them to help them identify the habits and the practices that is causing all of that is do you literally start from i have no idea i just i 
I've lost hope. I need help somewhere. Can you help me? Yeah, uh, people could always reach me by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. Um, I, I want people to understand that I believe this is my moral and, and, and my um, my moral, my ethical responsibility. I don't know why I was given this information. All I know is that it is the truth. And everyone has the right to have the opportunity to listen to it. And if it makes sense, utilize it. So if you email me, I will respond. It's absolute. If you decide that you want to learn more about the method, you can go to my YouTube channel uh, at Dr. Mitchell Yas, my Facebook page at the Yas Method. This is all free content. If you decide you'd like to consider a Zoom section, go to the website, livewithoutpains.com. You can learn about how these, these Zoom sessions work, what you can expect, and then if you choose to, you can select the day and time and schedule your Zoom session. But you are right. Everything starts with a blank slate. We want to understand your history. We want to understand physical aspects of what's going on with you. Your body, I promise you that the tissue in distress is doing everything in its power to let you know or someone who can ter interpret your body what tissue is creating that symptom. And once you could identify that tissue with the proper intervention, those symptoms will be ended because it no longer has to elicit those symptoms. And the great news is, as I said, in more than 98% of cases, it's muscle. Very easy to resolve. The easiest issue to resolve because with the appropriate exercise, using progressive resistance to strengthen that muscle, getting its force output greater than the force requirement of your activities, you can be pain-free and fully functional. Yeah. And that's good news, isn't it? That's, that's worth putting effort in and, and, yeah, exploring further, I think. So... Brilliant. Thank you again, Mitchell, for everything you've shared, for your wisdom, but also for what you're doing for people that, you know, I've been in pain in the past. It's not fun. Um, thankfully, I'm not in pain now. Hopefully now <laughs> going forward, I won't be either. Um, but yeah, it's not fun. And it does. It takes your focus away from what you want to do. You're less productive. You just can't engage and live the way you want. Um, and the fact that you're out there helping people change that um is huge so well done appreciate what you're doing thank you for what you've shared um for everybody listening as we said i'm not going to say a huge amount now because we've said it all really make sure you take action make sure you think about what is it that i need to do what's my next step you only need to take one next step to start with and then follow that with another next step and as i say for people that you know that have been suffering for a long time this could be the answer for them to bring hope to change their life completely and they'll thank you for it so and that's good whether you're in business and you do that or whether you're not you're helping a fellow human being that's got to be a good thing so for everybody listening take action and we will catch you next time bye for now thank you for listening to ukai business show we will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts want more check out www.ukibusinessshow.com get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com quote w-o-s-1-8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com 